Hello, welcome back everybody. This is Ian Chikini with another StarCraft 2 commentary. I know it's been a little while since I've done one, uh, but uh, you know I've been, I was waiting for Heart of the Storm to come out. There weren't many replays, but now Heart of the Storm is officially out. Got a lot of replays to cast. I'm going to start the White Rob. Well, let me go ahead and introduce our players. Down on the bottom left side of Neo Planet S. In the blue, it's going to be our Terran player from Clan Empire, Beastie Cutie. And the sad man on the top right, the T dot T. The Grandpa Toss, as he's commonly known as. In the red, it's going to be White Raw. So now we have our introductions out of the way. I can talk about what happened this weekend. Uh, if you guys were not aware, MLG went on this weekend. There was a uh, ton of really good Koreans there. And uh, obviously they, they all did pretty well. Um, I went for MLG. I was the uh, primary observer on the red stream. Uh, I was I observed every game on Friday. I observed some like more than half of the games on Saturday, and then most of the games on uh, Sunday. Championship. Uh, I did the semifinals, and oh, actually, two. One of the semifinals, I think. Yeah, one of the semifinals, and the third and fourth place, and then the finals. So if you happen to watch it and uh, you had any uh, feedback on my observing, just go ahead and you can post in the comments, send me an email, message me on YouTube, whatever. Uh, that was my first big event that I uh, actually did dedicated observing for. So uh, I tried to step it up a notch, so, you know, make it, make it that much better, because there was evidently a lot of people watching. I think there was like over 130,000 people watching. So no pressure, right? It wasn't like it was a flash versus life for the finals or anything. <laughs> Pretty crazy event, but it was a ton of fun. Uh, there was Total Biscuit was uh, there casting. Day 9, Husky, uh, In Control, and DJ Wheat. Of course, Axe Slab and Axe Axel Toss as well. And it was a really cool event. And uh, this is one of the builds I saw this weekend as well. Uh, we have Beastie Cutie going here for a reactor on his barracks after getting uh, uh, a couple of marines out. He's probably going to make a factor there. Either make widow mines or uh, maybe he's just going to keep making marines. It's hard to say. I, haven't, I didn't get to watch too many of the foreigners play at the event because there were actually, frankly weren't that many. Um, I think Killer was there. Yeah, Killer was there. I commented or observed some of his games. Um, Stefano was there. Uh, Huck was there. Uh, but fortunately, most of the foreigners got knocked out round one by the Koreans. Um, but uh-oh, a white raw sky toss man down here in the bottom. Of course, one thing that is so very good with Heart of the Swarm is this Stargate play. And if you watched any of MC's games versus MVP, I observed that series. Check that series out. MC shows that Widow Mines are no thing and uh, it's that was such a good game to observe I loved it it was or actually the whole series was really cool just watching MC place uh, just play so awesome so awesome it was so very cool uh, to watch that so um, we have uh, Beastie Q scouting out no expansion here for the grandpa toss he sees two stalker pressure at the opening and he's got to think something's going on now he's gonna scout the base up there yep he's gonna scout it and he's gonna see okay two gas uh, we've got a forge coming down. This is an interesting build from Yra. Still trying to allow pressure here with these, uh... Oh, he's got the time warp down. It's going to allow him to micro a little bit better. But no, he's not paying attention. Yra is going to lose one stalker and almost loses that mothership core. But, uh, luckily enough, he's going to fall back. We got a widow mine at the high ground. I saw a lot of widow mines this weekend. <laughs> That's for sure. This one, this one, uh, SCV is still up here, tinking around the base, peeking around. Uh, Nexus is going to go up. I don't think he has actually seen that yet. No, he hasn't seen that yet, but he sees oh, these two stalkers down at the bottom of his base. He's going to see it now as soon as he leaves, if he ever goes back down there. No units coming out of the Stargate. Oh, wait, here we go. Yeah, one up. We already have one Oracle out. Uh, and he's going to be able to go in here and do a lot of damage because there, there's a couple... Actually, there'll be enough Marines here to deal with this, but they're going to have a medevac. There's nothing here. No. All the SCVs are going to go down. Hey, look at that medevac doing the turbo dance. Get over there as quickly as possible. The Oracle is not going to go down. It's going to get out of there with four life. White Rod gets five kills and sneaks out of there alive. He's going to get his Nexus up. And uh, while Beastie Cutie has had his expansion up, or he's had his or uh, Oracle Command up sooner, it's allowed him to make more SCVs, get a higher worker count. 
Uh, actually, it would have, but uh, he lost five right there, so he did have a higher worker count. And he's got the double mules, which, of course, is really awesome. Double marines coming out here. Medivacs and uh, Factory making some uh, Widow Mines, something I saw a ton of this weekend as well. So we're going to have a drop. He did not scout that at the bottom. He did not scout the uh, starship. And we're going to have the Oracle come back in here at the top. Uh, he's got tons of energy, but uh, I don't know how much he's gonna actually going to be able to accomplish here. It does get scouted out. Will it go down? Will it go down? No, the barracks are in the way. He's just going to sneak on out of there. Oh, no. The boom. Taken out. We have a drop at the top. The BCQD does scout at the natural. He's going to kill uh, quite a few probes here. Uh, there we have the uh, upgrade ability, actually. Photon overcharge going down. And the medevac does get to... Oh, sweet. Love that. It went way off over the cliff there. Does get taken out by that overcharge ability on the Nexus. Thankfully, uh, that was cast on the Mothership Core. So we're heading out for White Raw. And this is going to turn into a little bit of a map. Oh, he managed to sneak a Widow Mine there, too. That guy's already got three kills, and I don't think White Raw knows this. He's going to lose another probe here. Which one will it be? It's going to be one of these two. Who's bad? Oh, two of them go down. Oh, no. Too bad. Too bad. He's got to know about it now. Hopefully he does. He's going to need an Oracle over here. He's going to have to do the reveal ability to uh, show its location. Yeah, here come the Stalkers. I think he's aware of it. He's got an Observer, right? He's making a Colossus. Um, the Observer is coming back, so yeah. The Observer is coming back. He's aware of it. He hasn't scouted out the base yet, but you know. Um, you kind of have to assume there was after the Oracle went in there. Here, it's going to come back. And uh, I will be able to take out that Widow Mine, which has been very pesky, getting six kills. There's a really cool thread on uh, Team Liquid talking about how uh, at least Zerg players can kind of micro around Widow Mines. Uh, you can actually run a Zergling through the, uh, ac the attack radius, I guess you could call it, of the Widow Mine. And because the, the time it takes from seeing the unit till uh, I think it's 1.5 seconds or something the time it takes for that widow mine to activate the zergling can run out of its radius attack radius and by that time uh, or as soon as it gets out of the radius the, res the timer resets and then you can essentially sneak a whole pack of zerglings right across the widow mine without it ever activating it's really cool you should check it out maybe we'll do a video about it uh, just to demonstrate that really quickly but anyway we've got a drop here beastie cutie Wants to deal some damage in the main here of White Rod, and White Rod does not see it. He sees it now. The Stalkers are unfortunately walking right up next to it. Oh, no. Poor White Rod. He's got two Colossus. That should be enough to deal with this. The Medivacs are thinking, all right, two Colossus. That's too big for my bridges. Let's get out of here. Observers keep an eye of all of this. And, of course, the uh, Hallucinated Phoenix now sees the extra command center and the uh, natural there. Uh, a lot of mining going on. Upgrades coming on for Beastie Cutie. You know, I, uh, I observed so much this weekend, this past weekend. Uh, I changed my settings around a little bit for it, so my, my sensitivity, my uh, drag scroll sensitivity, is a little bit uh, too high right now. I should have changed that, but I'll, I'll change it for the next commentary. I'll deal with it. But, uh, so yeah, I mean, like I said, if you guys uh, watched any of the MLG finals, I mean, any of the, any of them, just any of it, just give me observing feedback. Tell me what you like, what you don't like. But anyways, 99 supply for both players. Templar Archives coming out for White Raw. White Raw. I don't know why I always mess his name up. It's the W. It's the W, man. Ws are hard to say. We got a drop in the top. Stim goes down. He's going to suicide on it. No, it's a suicide anyway. With not much being gained there except uh, just getting beat up a little bit. He's going to be able to get a free kill here on this probe. On the probe? Yep, on the probe and on that pylon. Uh, didn't do that much damage up here. Another forge going to go down. White Raw is probably going to start those armor upgrades. More Widow Mines coming out here for our friendly Terran player, Beastie Cutie. Uh, charge and attack one upgrade. So uh, we've got two, actually three Colossus out now for White Raw. Uh, I suspect he's not going to keep making those. Uh, he's going to transition here into Storm and uh, Charge Lots. Third base going to go down for Beastie Cutie. Is this drop going to get intercepted? Oh, that one Marine. No, burned to death. Poor bastard. Poor bastard. SCV just kind of chilling out over here. Marines sneaking forward. And I love this. I love how Beastie Cutie is using these forward scouts just to keep an eye on this map. Making just like, it's just so good. I, I was, you know, it's been like, StarCraft has been around for a long time. But uh, I have like, since the beginning, wanted to see like advanced scouting from players. Because, you know, just the info you get and the decisions you can make on placement 
and uh, positioning with your army is so valuable just to leave one SCV here. It's just so, so valuable. You can completely flank your opponent. You can catch drops. You can just do all kinds of crazy stuff like that. And uh, I really love that players are starting to do that. Um, even just send out one Marine. Oh, no. High Templar feedback busted. thought that was out of range there. But uh, I love seeing this forward scouting. And, of course, Observer is also really good with that one Marine checking out the uh, possible fourth over here. SCV appeared. This was scouted out by Beast the Cutie, so he's aware of that, but not much activity is going on down there anyway. A lot of Vikings out here. Look at all these Vikings. We're up to 10 right now for three Colossus, which is a pretty safe number. Not overdoing it yet. Ghost coming out. Uh, plus one attack done. Plus one armor done. And the storm goes down. Oh, on those Vikings does a lot of damage. Enough for another storm. Are we going to see an engagement? Scan goes down. I think he did manage to pick up that observer. Medivac loading up, going to go do a drop on the right side of the map, probably over here at the natural, but there is a photon cannon up, but no land defense. High Templar being warped in, maybe that'll be positioned over here to do some feedback attack. Moving through the middle map, Beastie Q trying to reposition, maybe going to go take the top side of the map, which is a pretty good idea here. He's repositioning himself on the opposite side of the map, so he's got his drop as far away from his army as possible, and if White Rod doesn't split very well or doesn't have enough supply or is warp in, uh, or is, uh, Warp and cooldown done. He can kind of just do a lot of damage here, so we'll see. Drop's going to go to the top, so he's going to do a double drop. Whoa, a double drop going down over one on the right, one on the top. The one on the top is completely going to get shut down. The one on the right is going to do a little bit of damage if the warp in happens. The uh, uh, Colossus over here is going to lose the Colossus. It's getting focus fired down, but no, it's not going to go down. And that medevac is going to fall back. We have another attack to the top. All the Vikings are going to go straight in towards this Colossus. I don't think he got one killed, but he lost a lot of it. Oh, no, and the Marines and Marauders pushing in here. And uh, White Raw whip. <laughs> really? I can't say W's and R's with this guy. He really defended that quite uh, much better than I thought he would. Uh, White Raw trying to take off that Colossus. Not going to happen. In this map, this is such a cool map. This map just. It seems like it uh, spurs a lot of really aggressive play in players, you know? Uh, one of the best matches of the, of the series, I think at least, was the. Uh, Flash versus Life Finals on this map. It was game number one. Really cool. So much action. It was crazy. Zealot Warpins down here. Or actually, Zealot Attack probably warped in from over here. Let's see if he's going to get any kills. He's actually going to run away. Any work kills? 10, 13 so far. Little attack going to the top. That Photon Cannon should be able to take out that Medivac if it gets properly control fired attack. On the bottom right, another Photon Cannon will get taken out. A couple more probes are going to go down as well. The, top of the, top, uh, the attack at the top is going to go. Getting all tongue tied this game. I blame White Raw. Ah, uh, who am I kidding? I can't blame White Raw. He's too cool of a guy. Scan goes down. What does he see? Uh, another drop here at the top. The, the, all these drops really aren't strong enough. Uh, Beastie Cutie, he's warped in a DT here. That's probably. Oh no, the Medivac gets taken out. DT over here got two kills. Scan did go down. He's forced to fall back. Wait for that scan to finish, but by then, the missile turret will be up, and he should have vision of that. Fourth base going for White Raw on the top left side of the map. Not sure if BCQD has scouted that yet. No, he has not. Person poking coming down. Nice upgrades for White Raw. Three attack, two armor for himself. DT. Whoa. Am I scrolling so high now? Uh, another DT getting taken out. BCQD throwing up some pretty good defense. Both players seem to have better defense than offense this game. A lot of forward pylons here for White Raw. I love this. He's, it's allowing him multiple avenues for attack. Look at all these zealots being warped in here at the bottom. No defense down here except a couple of missile turrets. Those don't shoot down, unfortunately. Oh, scratch that. We got a bunker here. Uh, and SCV's quickly being pulled into that nice storm. Oh my god. That was like, did more. Oh, he's on hold position. Move! Move! <laughs> oh my god. The Colossus in the back are going to go down. High Templars get a couple storms off. The units are being uh, stemmed quite a bit here. But White Raw... Uh, I don't know if he's going to have enough to deal with this. Here come the medevacs, or actually, here come the uh, marine rotter. Storm goes down. A lot of those SCVs get taken out. Comes for Beastie Cutie GG's. 135 versus 84. White Raw is going to have to uh, take the victory there. It's, I mean, this huge, this is what really did all the damage here. All these zealots being warped in at the bottom of the map here, allowing for a really aggressive attack. We had a drop at the top, uh, natural for uh, Beastie Cutie, but it wasn't enough. It did manage, uh, actually, it was a little bit too late that the game was, you know, already over before these guys, you know, really accomplished anything. Um... Cool game here. I think it really just came down to uh, White Raw playing defense uh, until he got his tech he needed, uh, did the upgrades he got, uh, until the upgrades he needed. Uh, BCQ tried a couple drops, but White Raw really shut him down. You know, one thing I saw Flash do a lot of uh, 
um, just in general, is whenever he did drops, he did massive drops, like whole army drops. Just boom, drop his whole army, kill one or two tech buildings, one or two buildings, and then just fly out of there. That's something you can really do now with this uh, upgrade, uh, the, the, uh, the medic upgrade. Just allows you to just turbo left, right, all over the place, and this is a really good map to do it on because you can jump from your uh, your opponent's main to their third really easily, and it's and it's a really far walk for your uh, opponent to defend that. So uh, maybe if Beast would have maybe went for some more aggressive drops with more medevacs, he could have uh, done a little bit more damage there. But that, I guess, is game number one. These replays weren't given in order or whatnot, so I'm just going to cast them as we go along here, and you guys can keep track at home what the score is. <laughs> Um, so thanks for watching guys. I'm gonna be doing more uh, replays and whatnot since Heart of the Swarm is out So uh, and I'm gonna continue my wings of or actually Heart of the Swarm Campaign brutal playthrough. So if you want to check that out, you can Watch that as I uh, release those. So thanks for watching and uh, see you guys later